Jesus is alive. And with that, welcome to today's edition of The Spirit Life with Apostle Emmanuel. The topic of today's discussion is that it, that it frees the ordinary personality uh, out of Nigeria hates the name of Jesus. Why? Why does he hate the name of Jesus Christ? He says, and I want you to listen to yourself. I say, when they wrote that scripture, all knees shall bow and all tongues shall confess. The name Jesus did not exist. A name that did not exist until 400 years ago is your Lord and Savior. <laughs> now you heard for himself, he's, uh, you know, for yourself, that he's making proclamations about the name and the person of Jesus Christ. So let me read two things for you first before I answer that question, those things. I respond to those things he's raised up there. Number one, I'm reading to you from the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible says, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know you have eternal life. In the name of the Son of God. Believe on the name, the name. Then the next one I want to read to you is in John chapter 1, verse 12. And it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Uh, the third one I want to read to you is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, with what he has said, it is evident that he is not speaking by the Holy Spirit. Why do I say so? I want to show you a few examples. There are many, but let's take a few examples. Across five different languages and countries. Here the following. The Italians, amongst the Aberge-speaking people of Italy, they call the name Jesus Isuthi. Amongst the Pakistani and North Indian uh, 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 speaking people, they call the name of Jesus Isa. Amongst the Mahoris, which is a, a, a particular language in New Zealand, Oceania, and the Polish uh, region, they call him, they call the name Jesus Hehu. Amongst the uh, Tajish, Tajikistan people, um, they call the name Iso. Amongst the Aramaic and Syriac speaking people, they call his name Isoho. And I bet tell you that in Hebrew, he is called Yehoshua. In Greek, he is called Yesu. And in Yoruba, he is called Jesu. Now, these variations of the name has not changed from the name that he was given. Because when the angel spoke to Mary and spoke to the husband Joseph, he said, and you shall call his name Jesus. In case you do not know, let me tell you that the New Testament was not written in Hebrew. It was not written in Hebrew. It was written in Koine Greek. And in the original version of the Koine Greek translation or Koine Greek uh, version of the New Testament, the name has always been Jesus. And then in Latin, Jesu. So the question is, if that if we say that his name was Yehoshua and that because his own name uh, does not change uh, from what he is called, uh, no matter where in the world he is called by that name, and so the name Yehoshua should not have changed. It never changed. First and foremost, Ye Yehoshua is a, is a, is a English alphabet transliteration of a Hebrew sign. So when you write in Hebrew, you don't write with English alphabet. You write it in signs. And when you write in Greek, you don't write with English alphabet. You write in signs. And so... When the Bible was written in Koine Greek, the name, <coughs> excuse me there, the name uh, Yehoshua, which he was publicly called among the Hebrew speaking people, when it was being written in Greek, which was the version the New Testament was written in Greek, it was written as Jesus. So this question of it changing, where did he get it from? In, 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 in biblical translation, 
There are two key ways the Bible is translated. One of it is called functional equivalence, which is when the translation of the verses are done thought by thought. And then there's the word for word translation. When it comes to the name Jesus was called, or and is still called today, and will be called forevermore, Jesus, this was not what was applied. In fact, you need to know that Jesus, as he is called, is not even an English name. Jesus is not used amongst English-speaking people, right? And in, in the Jewish, in the, in the Greek, amongst the Grecians in the time of Jesus Christ and afterwards, you need to know that anyone who performed miracles or could heal or was a physician, a doctor, was called a Jassian. And so many of those who followed Jesus Christ in his time um, in Antioch, and so before they were called Christians, they were first called Jassians. Then they were called people of the way. Before they were called Christians. Before they were called Christians. So it was very common and popular to be called a Jassian, which is the English or the Latin transliteration, not English, the Latin translation of the Greek sign word, Jesus. I just want to address something here that is important for you to note. That all that he has said and all the information he has given is important that you understand why he is doing this. Because his purpose is to move you from the belief on the name of Jesus Christ. Where there is power to heal. Where there is power to save. Where there is power for deliverance. Um, I know a lot of you have, have also had a problem with calling the name Jesus because you were told in Philip, you know, the Bible says that the mention of the name Jesus, which is found in the book of um, Philippians chapter 2, when you read from verse 9 to 13, especially verse 10, it doesn't say the mention of the name Jesus. So you can mention the name for all you care, just like the seven sons of Siva, or as we call it, Skiva, seven of them who met a madman and said to the madman, by the name of Jesus that Paul preached, we command you to come out. And the devils spoke to them and said, Jesus we know, Paul we have heard of. So the devils mentioned the name Jesus. You know, when you, when you are given a name, your name is not just an identity, it's a code. When that name is given to you, it's different from you having a name. A name and the name are two different things. Now. When you have registered a voice in your head, in your mind, whenever that voice calls you, whether the voice calls you by your pet name or calls you by your baptismal name, by your formal name, by whatever name you're called, once you recognize that voice, you respond. Now, why is this important? Because the Bible says that in all that you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. And what is that name? It is not just in the mention, you know, in the, uh, I don't mean to mention in the giving of the name, but or the meaning of the name. It's not about the meaning of the name. It's in the personality of the name. It's in the character of the name. It's in the authority of the name. And I want to put one more information across to you so that you're not leaving in, left in any doubt. And this is important. And, and I want to read this to you. You know, when he says that the 16, uh, the, the 1611 version of King James did not have, uh, you know, Jesus or did not have a J, it had a Jesus. So how did it change? It's, it is, uh, it is only a function of, uh, huge, uh, uh, you know, incapacity to reason or think or understand the information. Because if he had done his research, he claims to have done, then he would have found out that in English language, first and foremost, we did our, our, we wrote in English based on Latin words, like characters. It, that's why you find a lot of Latin words in English as well, as you will find some French. And when you look very closely, you will find that in 1524, a man called Ian Giorgio, uh, Ian Giorgio Tricino, an Italian, was one of the first, he's called the father of the letter J. He was one that introduced the distinction between I and J, which was commonly, you know, inter, 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 in exchange between, between, uh, uh, in pronunciation, in phonetic pronunciation. Paul, for example, the Bible tells us that he was called Saul in Hebrew, but in Greek he was called Paul. I mean, you can go from here to Brazil and you find there are people called Jesus. Even in today's, um, he, uh, uh, land of Israel, there are people called Jesus, but there is only one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
There is only one who has power to heal and to save in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. There is only one that I'm going to call his name now. And when I call his name, if you were oppressed by a devil as you're watching me right now, or you were oppressed and tormented by sickness, it will leave your body immediately. There's only one name. And whether you call that name Esau, you call that name Jesus, you call that name, you know, uh, Christos, Jesus Christos, as the Ethiopians will call it, whatever you call it, it's only one person you're referring to. And I'm saying this to every one of you for whom the devil has used that he frees to cause unbelief in your heart. Unbelief on the name that is above every name. That unbelief leaves you very this very moment right now. And I want you to say with me, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I believe on the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he came to die for our sins. I believe that on the third day he rose bodily from the dead. And I believe that today he has given me the Holy Spirit and he has given me the power to use his name. Remember I said it's not in the meaning of the name as it were, but it's in the power, the authority and the character of the name. That's why he said do all things in my name. In other words, do all things in my authority. Do all things in my power. That's why he said that um, no name is given under heaven by which a man is saved except the name Jesus Christ. Say with me, I receive you into my life. I believe you died for my sins. You rose again on the, you know, on the third day bodily from the dead and you live forever more. You are alpha, you are omega, you are the beginning and you are the ending. You, are, you were dead and now you are alive. If you said these words with me, then you have received Jesus and you're born again. And so you have a right to be free. You have a right to be well. If you are suffering from mental disturbances, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that the power of God comes upon you and that you're free, you're healed, and you're strong. Put your hand on your body and receive it to yourself and say, I receive, and so it is yours. Until I see you next time, Jesus is alive. God bless you.